All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everybody to virtual office hours. The goal here is for people to ask questions and uh, we'll be happy to take responses. I'm here with uh, Monty Creaser, who's the fantastic community TA for the course. And what I thought I might do first is just kind of walk through the website and uh, talk about a couple things that are probably worth noting. So let me see if I can go ahead and share my screen. Let's see, we need a browser to do that effectively. Let's go find a browser. There's a browser. There we go. So you should be able to see my, my web browser now. And uh, this is kind of showing you the, the view of the course from a, a learner perspective, or at least my view of the course from a learner perspective. You might see a few things a little bit different. Probably the most useful place to go just to get a big picture view of the course is the course content. If you're in the course, I'm sure you've already taken a look at that. You can see here we've got everything broken up by weeks. Each week has a number of different modules. Week number one has the most number of modules. It's got three modules. The reason for doing that, of course, is that uh, the first two modules give you kind of an overview and don't really get into the nitty gritty of showing a lot of code and having assignments beyond a few quizzes here and there. So <clears throat> there are three modules there. Week two, we start getting more into the nitty gritty of the course. We have control flow discussions, and which includes for loops and while loops and do while loops, as well as if statements. And then we also have a section here about structured data. These include things like arrays and uh, various kinds of collections from the Java collections framework. Uh, by the way, something to note that's important is the fact that uh, the Java collections framework has different types of data structures that work in different ways depending on the time complexity of the algorithms and data structures you're trying to use. So for some of the things where you're gonna be doing a lot of work and you have to check for the existence of stuff, I would recommend you use something faster like a hash map than array lists, which take linear time. So that'll help speed things up quite a bit. So that's something that's worth noting. Week number three has some of the most interesting parts of the course. From my point of view, this deals with classes and inheritance and, and polymorphism. Right now, we put all these modules into the same week. That's actually probably a fairly large amount of stuff. So the next time we do this, we're probably going to move the inheritance discussion into week four. But right now, they're all kind of glommed together. The good news is that you don't have to worry too much about how the weeks break up because, uh, because of the fact that you can do the material sort of at your own pace. So if you want to wait and do the material about inheritance and polymorphism in week four, there's not a problem with that. Just uh, make sure you budget your time properly if you want to do all the various things. So this is probably my favorite part of the course in terms of the material, but depending on your background, you might find this uh, a little bit more challenging than the other parts. And then week four right now really focuses on the final mini project, which is a calculator application. And you can watch the video that explains the assignment. And I also have a video that does a walkthrough of all the source code. Now, if you want to take a look at the assignments in a bird's eye view, you can click on the assignments tab here. And what you see, of course, is you end up getting all the assignments. And I think that there's something on the order of 16 or 17 assignments. Some of them are quizzes. Uh, some of them are auto-graded programming assignments. You'll notice that we have other peer-graded assignments for many of the modules, but those are marked as optional. So they don't count for your grade one way or the other. Then down at the bottom, we have our mini project, which is really the most kind of open-ended project where you get to write the solution in a much more uh, creative way. And then we'll do peer assessment to review that solution because we wanted to give people plenty of flexibility in order to, to be creative. Monty just shared an excellent suggestion that make sure that you search the discussion forum before you post because undoubtedly, especially if you're joining the course a little bit late, undoubtedly somebody's already asked that question and we've probably already answered it. So it'll save everybody a lot of time if you just take the time to, to look for the, to take a look through the discussion forum first see if you find an answer to your question. And if you find one that's close to it, you might want to post there just as a follow-on because chances are people 
who are interested in that topic have already flagged it. And uh, also another excellent point, a lot of these types of topics can be easily learned by taking a look at the, uh, the Google, just doing a Google, looking at Stack Overflow and so on. And uh, that'll just be, a, as, as Monty points out quite correctly, that's just some good habits to get into in order to, uh, in order to find out what to do. Okay, so uh, we're continuing to improve the course. Thanks very much to everybody for your feedback and your suggestions for improvement. We've been incorporating a lot of that stuff into the material. And so uh, it should be in better shape and it'll certainly be in better shape when the next, uh, the next session starts up here, which is in a, I think it's on Monday actually, the next session of this particular MOOC. Uh, 